ATP is the main energy currency of all cells. There are several different pathways by which ATP can be produced, and some are more efficient than others. Let's take a look at aerobic respiration in eukaryotic cells. Cellular respiration is a series of enzyme-catalyzed reactions that happens in three major steps. Glycolysis, which occurs in the cytosol outside of the mitochondria, the Krebs cycle, which occurs in the mitochondrial matrix, and the electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation, which occur on the inner membrane of the mitochondria. The prefix glyco means sugar, and the suffix lysis means to break down. In glycolysis, glucose is broken down to form two molecules of pyruvate. During this process, the glucose is oxidized, or loses electrons, and two ATP are generated. The electrons are picked up by NAD plus to form NADH. NADH is an electron carrier molecule. Electron carriers are also referred to as coenzymes because these electrons are going to be transferred to and are necessary for other enzyme catalyzed reactions. Pyruvate enters the mitochondria where it is further oxidized to yield organic intermediate molecules. These organic intermediates enter the Krebs cycle, which takes place in the matrix of the mitochondria. Oxidation of the organic intermediates is completed in the Krebs cycle, and the extracted electrons are picked up once again by NAD to form NADH, and another electron carrier, FAD, to form FADH2. Two ATP are generated in this process, as well as carbon dioxide waste. The electron carriers generated by glycolysis and the Krebs cycle head to the electron transport chain. The ETC is a series of protein channels embedded in the inner mitochondrial membrane. Electrons from NADH and FADH2 are passed along in a series of chemical reactions. Electron transport provides the energy needed to perform active transport. Protons are actively pumped from the matrix to the intermembrane space. This establishes a high concentration of protons. To maintain this proton gradient, the proton pumps have to keep pumping. For the proton pumps to keep pumping, electron transport must continue to occur. At the end of the ETC, electrons are removed by oxygen. Oxygen is referred to as the final electron acceptor of the ETC in the mitochondria. When oxygen accepts electrons, it also accepts protons, resulting in the formation of water as a byproduct. If oxygen is not present, the ETC shuts down, and so do the proton pumps. I like to think of the ETC like a slide, and the electrons are like people going down. If someone doesn't get off the bottom of the slide, then the next person can't go. If oxygen doesn't accept electrons at the end of the ETC, then electron transfer stop, and so does active transport. And once again, the proton gradient is necessary for our final step of oxidative phosphorylation. ATP synthase is an enzyme and protein channel that allows for chemiosmosis. Chemiosmosis refers to the flow of protons down an electrochemical gradient. The flow of protons generates a moving charge that can be used as a source of energy. As chemiosmosis occurs through the ATP synthase channel, the energy is used to generate ATP. In the reaction that forms ATP, inorganic phosphate is joined with ADP. The addition of phosphate is called phosphorylation. Because this reaction cannot proceed without oxygen present, we refer to it as oxidative phosphorylation. Oxidative phosphorylation has been estimated by scientists to produce over 30 ATP molecules. Without oxygen, we can't make enough energy to sustain cell function. 
but some organisms can produce sufficient energy in the absence of oxygen through other metabolic pathways. 